Okay, so the plan for today is to hand back the midterm, or the first quiz, which is probably going to take about 10 minutes. Uh, and then I'm going to take it up, and then we're going to call it quits. So hopefully it'll be a bit of a short lecture today. There is uh, the assignment that was due Wednesday is now due Friday. Now, there's about five weeks left in the course and you still have three assignments to do. So the other remaining assignments, they're going to be, the deadlines are going to be a little bit tighter than the first three. Um, so you have to be prepared for that. Okay, last name, A through C. A through C, please come get your uh, first quiz here. They, they are in alphabetic order by last name. Okay, last name D through G, D through G. D through G? Oh, well, okay. All right. H through M. M. H through M. No, I have it separate. Do you want it separate? Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing you are Sarah? Yeah. N through R. N through R.
So fast. Okay, now believe it or not, SNT. SNT. S starts over here. You want to? Yeah. Is in this patch? Uh, Sorry. It's M. M. Yeah. Sorry. What's his What's his name? George Matthews. Oh, George. Yeah. And who else? Uh, Aiden. Aiden. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, here. And it is H, right? Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't think I can give you his back. Did he ask you to pick oh, it up? Oh, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I can give it to you if you want. But the problem is, uh, yeah. Technically, he's, he's allowed privacy regarding this. But if you know, then. OK. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, v through Z. V through Z. So everybody else, I guess. I thought I just saw yours. Then uh, Van it was here. <laughs> I'm sure it was here. Um, Maybe I'm blind. Mm. <laughs> it's not in the H's, is it? Van. Hang on. So I alphabetize them according to the. Oh, I can't look at the class because it's up there. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's Van Leeuwen, right? Sorry, what? What's the first name? Oh, well, that one. Oh, that one's under the P's. Yes, that one's under the P's. That was hard to find. That was really hard to My deal with. My name is all over. Because, uh, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Okay. Everybody get your test back? Yes, yes? All right. All right. So, well, these are all out of order now. All right. So let's quickly go over this thing, and I will tell you what the most common errors were, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, um, okay, part A, symbol used for the uppermost directory in Linux is the forward slash, right? It's not the tilde. Surpri surprisingly, a lot of people wrote the tilde. So the tilde is the home directory, right? The home directory belongs to the user. That's not the root directory, right? The root directory is slash. Okay, inode, so a lot of people confused an inode with an inode number. Right now, an inode has a number, the number is unique on any, on any device. That's not really that important for our purposes, right? 
What is an inode? The inode is the thing that actually stores the contents of the file, well, information about the file and where to find the actual contents, right? So if you put down something like it's a unique identifier or something like that, you got like half, you should have gotten half a mark. Um, I don't know how consistent I was about that, but I tried to give everybody half a mark if you put down something like, sorry, if you basically confused it with the inode number. Okay, absolute path and relative path, right? Absolute path always starts at root. Absolute uh, relative path always starts at the current directory, right? It doesn't start from an arbitrary directory. Some people wrote that it starts from an arbitrary, like any directory. It's not technically true. It always starts from the current working directory. Right? Uh, question mark and star in file name expansion, right? So some people wrote that question, some people gave, uh, said that question mark is the exit status, which is true, but it's not the exit status in a file name expansion. Right, in file name expansion, question mark means any single character, right? Star means any sequence of characters, right? There was a lot of uh, confusion with, well, there was a lot of people who wrote star can match or meant like the first part of the file name or the last part of the file name or something like that. It's not precisely correct. Star means it matches anything. Uh, exit status, so a command that runs successfully with no errors, the exit status is always zero. Non-zero means that something unusual has happened. Oh, this was an interesting one. Okay, so F. So you want to take the string oops, right? And you want to overwrite this file called my file with that string, right? So in other words, you want to replace the contents of my file with the string oops, right? And there's a hint that says consider using a redirection, right? So a lot of people wrote uh, oops and then redirected it to a file. You can't redirect a string to a file. Right? You, can uh, you can redirect standard output to a file. So the trick here is to print the string. Right? Use a command to print the string. You can use echo or you can use print f, right? or anything else that prints a string. Right? And then redirect the contents to my file. Right? You have to use the single greater than in this case. Right? If you use the double greater than, that appends to the end of the file. Right? This one asks you to overwrite. So if you're missing echo, or if you're missing, the, or if you use greater than, greater than, uh, that you should have gotten half a mark. Uh, the three standard streams in Linux, right? Standard in, standard out, standard error. Uh, first line of code in a bash script is usually that. You can also give, you can also use user bin env bash, whatever, right? Something like that. Um, but that's what a bash script should start with. Uh, dollar sign in front of a variable name gives you the value of the variable. That's it, right? Dereferences the variable. Uh, length of a string. Uh, so I got a lot of Python for this, which is interesting. So I got a lot of length string, uh, which isn't correct, right? It's not <laughs> Python. Uh, it's that, right? So dollar brace percent, uh, sorry, dollar brace hashtag name of the variable gives you the length of the variable. Uh, next question, I think, a lot of you went a little too quickly and you didn't actually read the question carefully, right? So I've got a variable stores an integer value. I'd like to double it and store the value in the variable, right? So what line of code would you write to double the value stored in var, right? You want to double it and store it in var. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, so there's lots of ways to do it. They all involve some sort of arithmetic expansion, right? Now, uh, so you can do it like that. Right? So if you write the var equals outside of the double round brackets, right, then you have to use an arithmetic expansion. So you need the dollar here. Right? So you can't write var equals round bracket, round bracket. That doesn't work. Right? If you just use the round brackets, then you have to assign to var inside the round brackets. Right? And there's lots of ways to do this. Right? So you can write var times equals two, or var equals var plus var, var equals two times var, Whatever, right? Var plus equals var would work, I guess. No one wrote that, but that would work, right? So assignment inside, then it's just double round bracket. Assignment outside, then you need to, uh, then you need the dollar sign, right? You need the dollar sign to get the value of the arithmetic expansion. L, write an if statement that prints true. If the file name quiz one docx exists in the current working directory, prints false otherwise, right? So here you need to remember, right? Double square bracket. Single square is fine in this question too. Right, round brackets or not, right? Uh, minus E or minus F, right? I don't care which one you use, right? Minus E tells you, 
does something exist with this name? Right? Could be a directory, could be a file, could be a special file. Right? Minus F tells you does a regular file exist, so that would be fine too. Right? And then uh, the rest of the if statement, and that's it. Right? So question one was just basic knowledge. Right? Hopefully, um, I guess if you've been paying attention and you actually managed to study for the quiz, uh, I would have hoped that you would have done fairly well in question one. Question two. All right. So your current working directory has several regular files, right? So you're in a directory, you've got some files, right? And it has some subdirectories, right? Those directories don't have any other subdirectories, right? So you just have some files, directories, and inside these directories there might be some other files and that's it. Right? I want you to find all files that end with .txt in the current directory plus all the subdirectories. Hopefully only using one command, but I think if you use two commands, I gave you all the marks anyway. Right? So to get all the files in the current directory that end with .txt, right, that's that. Right? So star .txt, that gives you all the files in the current directory that end in .txt. Now to get all the files in all the subdirectories that also end in .txt, you need some way to match all of the subdirectories. Right? So remember star, matches anything, right? So star slash matches any subdirectory name, right? And then inside the subdirectories, you want to find all the files that end in .txt. Right? So you need both of these. Um, yeah, as I said, if you actually use two commands, so if you use ls star .txt and then ls star dot star, uh, star, star slash star .txt, uh, you got full marks for that, even though that was the way I was hoping you'd do it. Now, you can also use find, right? But find is a little bit trickier. Right, because you have to, the syntax for find is a little bit complicated. Right, so you could also use find, uh, it should be find and then dot, so starting in the current directory, minus name, right, so the name of the file, and then if you're using minus name, it always goes inside of quotes, dot tx, star txt, like that, uh, and that would have been fine too. I don't care about min depth and max depth if you used it. Right? It doesn't matter. Uh, so those are the two ways. Is there any other way to do this? Uh, I don't think there's any other good way to do this. I think those are the two ways that you should, would probably answer this question. Uh, next question. Write a pipeline that sorts the lines of a file named my file. Okay? So sort the lines of a file named my file. So sort my file. Right? You could also write cat uh, my file. and then pipe that to sort, that's fine too. Right? But sort will read in a file, so you don't need the pipe there. But it's fine if you put it in. Right? Not echo, right? echo, echo is just prints a string. Right? Cat prints the contents of a file. Right? They do two different things. Okay, so that's the sort part. Saves the sorted lines to a file named sorted. Right? So if you want to save something to a file, your choice is either a redirection or a T. Right? But this one says you need a T, so you probably need a T, right? So if you redirect this to a file, right? So if you redirect here, that's the end of your pipeline, right? Because the next part of the pipeline doesn't get anything. It gets no output. Because as soon as you redirect the contents, the output of sort to a file, nothing else gets passed down the pipeline. So you can't use, a, you can't use the redirection here. Whoa, sorry. No, come on. Okay. You can't read, all right, so pipe to T. Now remember what T does. T just takes whatever it gets as input and passes it to the next part of the pipeline, right? And then saves it to the file that you specify here, right? So that's gonna save it to the file sorted and then it takes whatever sort my file gave it and passes it to the next command, right? The next command, oh, what does it say? It asks you to print the number of lines in my file. So sorting doesn't change the number of lines, right? So you just pout the output to word count, right? Remember WC, so that's from assignment one, minus L gives you the number of lines, right? Uh, and that's it, right? So just a simple little pipeline, yeah? I wrote word count L and sorted. And word count L and sorted. Yeah, that word count doesn't, doesn't save the output anywhere though, right? I was trying to make Ah, you were trying to count. You're, yes, okay, so that's, that's another common error. Um, 
which actually isn't surprising. So the way these pipelines work is that each command in the pipeline, that runs in a separate shell. Right? So it for every time, every element of the pipeline uh, gets sent to a different shell, right? So a subshell gets spawned to run the command. Now the problem with the way this works is the various parts of the pipeline, they're not synchronized at all, right? So if you write the output to sorted, there's no guarantee that the next part of the pipeline gets the file sorted before it's finished being written. So that's the problem. Uh, so this is the way you should have written it. Now I didn't actually tell you that, so if you want to come complain during office hours, uh, we can have a discussion regarding that, <laughs> right? Okay, question three. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that, that is kind of surprising though, that that's the way it works in Bash. All right, so this one's write a little script. So this is basically testing, can you write a script that takes in a command line argument and does something with the command line argument, right? So this one says that your command line argument, that's the name of a file, right? You would like to rename the file to dot something, right? Where file name is the na original name of the file, right? So I don't want you to rename the file to dot file name. I want you to rename it to dot something where something is the original name of the file, right? Okay, the script then removes all permissions on the file for all users except the current user, right? So remember, it's supposed to rename the original file, right? So rename the original file to dot something and then change the permissions on that renamed file, right? Permissions for the current user are not modified. Okay, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. So the way you use change mod here is very specific. Well, it's sort of specific. No error checking is required, blah, 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 blah. Right? Now, for a surprisingly short script, um, there's a lot that can go wrong in this script. Right? So number one, that should be there. Right? Um, although I don't think I really cared that much if it wasn't. Um, but it, that should be there. Right? It's a bash script, so the, uh, the hash bang should be there. Now, how do you rename a file in bash? Well, the command is move. There's other ways to do this. So I'll, get, I'll, I'll tell you what the other ways are in a second. Okay, now you have to quote the dollar one, right? So remember dollar one, that's the first command line argument. So you have to quote that and you have to quote the renamed file, right? So that's the original file name. There's your new file name, right? It's just period followed by the rest, followed by the original file name. Why do you have to quote them? Right? Because if the original file name has a space in it, everything blows up, right? Then you get move, some name, space, some name. So it's gonna try to move the first part of the name to the second part of the name, which doesn't work, right? So because of the fact there could be spaces or other unusual characters in the file name, you have to quote the dollar one in this case, right? Uh, to make the renamed file name, it's just period dollar one. There's nothing special about the period, right? In, uh, inside a file name. Right. A lot of people escaped the period. You don't have to escape the period. There's nothing special about it in a command name. In a, uh, there's nothing special about it when you use it as part of a regular string. Okay, now it says change the permissions of the file. Oh wait, my answer's wrong. <laughs> there should be a quote dollar percent, a dollar, sorry, quote period dollar one uh, after this. I have to fix that. Um, so change, remove all permissions for everybody but the current user. Right, so everybody but the current user is GO, right? <coughs> Group and other, right? Remove the permissions is minus, so minus RWX. Uh, there are other ways to do this, but they're more complicated. Okay, so a lot of students wrote, uh, used copy. So they copied the original file to a new file and then they removed the original file. That's fine, but you still have to quote everything, right? Uh, and move is a lot easier, right? Um, so that, once I fix the solution, is the preferred answer, right? Uh, but like I said, there's a lot of places you could go wrong in this, uh, in this little script. Um, so it's kind of surprising that even in two lines, you can, you can actually make many errors uh, in just those two lines. There's lots of ways to write that change mod command. Uh, so you could do change mod, let's see, you guys need to be able to see. So. So I wrote it that way, but you could do change mod uh, group equals, and then nothing, and other equals nothing, and then dollar one, like that. So that works, 
And there's a whole bunch of other ways to make this work too, right? You could do change mod six times and remove all the permissions one at a time. At least one person did that. Um, there's no good way using the numbers to do it. Right? So uh, is there a good way to do this? Someone wrote a long set of if statements to fix it. So there is a way to do it, it's just really awkward. Yeah, question. No, because uh, you don't know what the original permissions on the file were, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because you you mod. I don't. Well, I, I'd have to see what the. I'd have to see what you actually wrote. So show it to me after. I think I remember your. I think I remember marking that. Uh, yeah. So show it to me after. I, I may have been wrong, on on the answer. All right. Last question. Uh, here we go. Okay. It says you've got this command called contains. Right. Command, uh, sorry, contains followed by some string followed by some file name has an exit status of zero if that string is in that file, right? Otherwise, it has an exit status of one. So basically, it tells you is that string in that file somewhere, right? Which you could also get using grep. But I told you no regular expressions, so I gave you this function, in, this command instead. Okay, you've got a little, you've got a little, uh, you want to read in a grades file, and then you want to do some stuff. So if there are no command line arguments, the script simply exits without error. All right, so how do you cut the number of command line arguments? Well, it's dollar number, right? How do you check if it's zero? Well, equals equals zero works as long as you're inside double round brackets, right? Double round brackets let you do arithmetic, right? So you can use equals equals correctly inside of double round brackets. If you put it inside double square brackets, uh, then it's string comparison. Right? Um, equals equals zero. Yeah, it's string comparison, which isn't really what you want here. Right? You really want um, a, a numeric comparison here. So it's double square. Uh, sorry, do if you're going to use double square, then you're supposed to use a dollar number minus EQ zero. And then away you go. So that's, uh, that was a fairly common error there. Uh, exit zero or just exit will exit with exit status zero. You don't have to write it this way. This is the easiest way to do it, I think. Right? Just pick off the cases one at a time. OK, if there's one command line argument, then the first, then the command line argument is the name of a file. Print the contents of the file. OK, so first command line argument is the name of a file. You don't need this variable here. You can just use $1, that's fine. Right? But whatever you do, you have, to cat, you have to put the name of the variable inside of double quotes. Again, because it's a file name, right? and the file name might have spaces in it. If it has spaces in it, uh, then this is going to split on the spaces and you're going to get an incorrect result. Right? Cat is the command that prints the contents of a text file. Right? And then you can then exit with zero or just plain old exit, it's fine. Two command line arguments. Second argument is interpreted as the name of the student, right? If that student has a grade in the grades file, then the script prints student name has a grade, otherwise it prints student name does not have a grade, right? How do you test if the student is in the grades file? Well, you just use contains, right? Now this is the slightly tricky part in this question is how do you use contains in an if statement, right? So the answer is you use it like this, right? So remember you have a command and you want to use the exit status of the command as the condition, right? So when you want to do that, it's just the command, right? The command doesn't go inside round brackets. It doesn't go inside square brackets. It's just the name of the command. I think it works if you put it inside a single set of round brackets. Uh, it doesn't work if you put it inside double round brackets, unfortunately. But single round brackets, I think, does work, right? So no square brackets here, right? You're just going to use the exit status of the command, right? If the exit status is zero, it's true. Right, so again, make sure everything's quoted because the student names have spaces in them, right? The name of the grades file could have spaces in it, has to be quoted, right? When you, uh, the echo here uh, should be quoted, although it probably doesn't matter if you quote it or not, honest, uh, to be, it probably doesn't matter. Um, you should quote it, right? So 
if the student is in the file, print that, right? Now, there's only two conditions here, right? It's strictly if else. So don't write else if or else e -L, e l if here and check for the opposite condition, right? It doesn't make any sense. If that's not true, then just print that, right? And away you go. And then finally, if there's extra command line arguments, right, then you're supposed to interpret the third command line argument as a grade, and you're supposed to append the student and the grade to the end of the file uh, like that. Right? So student name, comma, space, grade at the end of the file. Right? So how do you append to a file? Well, it's just greater than, greater than. Right? So print the string made up of the student name, comma, space, grade, and append it to the end of the file. Again, everything has to be quoted. Well, uh, this has to be quoted, and this has to be quoted here. Right? Again, because they can all have spaces in them, uh, so you have to be careful about that. Right? So quote, and away you go. Actually, these do have to be quoted because the student name can technically have a funny character in it, uh, which will screw up uh, if it does uh, some sort of expansion. Right? And that's it. Uh, anybody have any questions about the answers? Yes? Yeah. So there's no append command. No, not that I know of. No. Yeah. One. B or D? B as in Bob? Okay. So what is an inode? So an inode just stores information about the contents of a file, right? Technically, it's a data structure that stores stuff about the file, right? So the modification date, the size, stuff like that, right? The inode number is the number assigned to that thing, right? So there's a difference between the two. Um, although if you said something about the inode number being unique, blah, 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 you should have gotten half a mark. Okay. Yes? Sorry? Metadata. Uh, I get, I, is it data about the file? Yeah. yeah. So if you wrote that, you should have gotten marks too. I'm just, uh, if someone did write that then. So the, the, uh, basically the inode stores yeah, information about the file, plus it tells the operating system where to find the contents of the file on disk. Uh, and exactly how it does that is actually quite complicated. Yes? It's not a reference though, right? It's not a reference. Um, anything else? Okay, so I don't know what the average is, but there were a lot of grades above 24, right? So there's a whole whack of people that did very well in the quiz. I don't care, I think that's great, right? So, I mean, you shouldn't expect your next quiz to be any harder or any easier or whatever, right? I'm not gonna punish you because you did well in the quiz, right? Um, and that's it. Any other questions? Super. I will see you on Wednesday, yes? Yeah.